Hello and thank you for coming to check this out. Okay, this is going to be a quick look at a project file with this simple title graphic here. So the one on the left is from, uh, it's one of the titles in an After Effects titles pack from Pixel Brain CS, and there's a link in the description to go and check out that After Effects project at their product page at the Envato Market. You'll see it come in at about 3 minutes 15 seconds. This one over here is the version I've done in Motion. And this title here is fully uh, auto-adjustable. So when we make changes to the text size, add more, everything is going to keep up and adjust. Really convenient for the user. And there are some other supporting other supporting adjustment controls here as well. So what we're going to do is go and have a look at the project file that is there for you to download with this uh, graphic in there. And it's not going to be a step-by-step. -step. Um, all the steps you need to know to make something like this are covered in the basic automatic titles guides 1 to 12 that are there for you to check out. So if you're looking for the real fine details, that's all there. What we're going to do is just have a look at how the elements all work together. And all right, let's jump over and see how it's done. Okay, this is the project file that is there for you to download. You'll need the current version of Motion to open it and use it. It's just a Motion project file, it's not uh, Final Cut titles yet. I'll leave that for you to, to do. And when you do open it up, you won't have the publishing done. I'll leave that for you to do it the way that you prefer. Uh, these section titles here, if you're not sure about them, uh, let me know and I'll do a quick tutorial about how they're done. Okay, so uh, the first thing to point out is we've got just this main uh, group here, and in there we have this group Rise. So Rise is the group that's animating up and down on the Y, and all the other elements are sitting in there. So we are going to start with this group here, Base, and we'll have a look at how the animation begins. Okay, so we want to begin here with this shape here, lead. So this is like the master element. If I turn off the other elements, uh, I'm using a few align two behaviors here, so we'll get a bit of uh, system lag as we go through it. So this shape here is pretty much what everything is based on. It's aligned to the main title and it's linked to the main title for size. The other shapes here are linked to this shape for size, not the title. And they are aligned to the title though. And we'll see why we just want to link everything to this shape instead of the title in a bit. Right, so this shape comes in. Let's just turn off the mask. So, as we've covered before with the basic automated titles guides, the size of this shape is determined by uh, the text and making adjustments in the offsets of the links. And we are animating this shape by scale. It's not the only option you have. You have other options to animate when you've linked it to text, but this one, uh, it's simple enough. We can get by with scale. So this is animating in keyframed on the x-axis. So then the next element we have is this shape here, white lead. And white lead is just, I'll turn this mask back on, it's just a duplicate of this shape. So we duplicate the lead shape, rename it as mask, and what we do is we offset the start point in the timeline. So you see white lead starts later, but all the keyframing is the same. And we've linked 
The source for the size is the lead shape, not the text. We change the source for the size. And if I turn this back on, you'll see that I've left the size. Uh, I've increased the Y offset to make it quite large. And you'll see it, it's animating to 100% scale. But if we have a look at the X offset here, it's cut short by the X offset. So it doesn't cover up the lead shape entirely. It doesn't wipe it out entirely we are left with this bookend. So then the next element to come in, again, it's just a duplicate of the lead shape. This is the main. I'll turn it on now. So this shape follows in at right on 27 frames. So all the timing here was done based on reproducing the After Effects graphic. And so it animates in from 0 to 100. So the keyframing is all the same. But note the offset. The X offset is set even lower so that it only reaches to this point. And so we get the bookend. And as we noted before, if we come to the text here and add some more, when you're using the offsets, they're always going to keep proportion to everything else. So when it adjusts automatically, everything stays in the right place. So this is how we do the opening animation. So we'll have a look now at the text. Ah, right, okay, just before we look at doing the text, uh, I pointed out before that I make the mask uh, a lot larger on the y-axis, and I didn't explain why I do that. So the reason is that if you have the mask the identical uh, size as the shape, you can end up with some kind of like shadow lines, artifact lines, so my way around it is just to ensure that it's a lot larger than the area it's supposed to mask out. There's a few things you can do to eliminate those lines, but I'll cover that in another tutorial. Okay, so looking at the text then. I'll just turn off the mask shape there. All right, so on the main shape, this shape here, you'll see that there is an image mask applied and the source for the image mask is the main title there. And it's set to subtract, so it will stencil it in, everything. Uh, so that's pretty much transparent through the text. The text is animating in with sequence text, and because of the mask, it's only going to be visible within the boundaries of the shape. Okay, so the sequence text is animating out with the sequence out, so you can just use custom speed. With, this, with one sequence to uh, keyframe it to come in and keyframe it to reverse out. But when you do that, you give up the options of being able to publish these parameters for your user if that's something you want to do. So the way I go about it is to duplicate the sequence. Make sure that the value out is linked to the value in so that when you do publish the value in, you have just one control that will send it in from one place and send it back out to the same place as well on the axis that you're using. So the benefit to you of publishing that, let's see, we, we know our text is going to adjust to more lines, but when we do that the area grows, so the mask area grows, and at the very beginning you're going to see the text coming in too early, being visible too early, so when you provide that control you allow your template user to dial back the original position. If I was to do this as a Final Cut template, um, so I've just reproduced everything pretty much frame by frame for the After Effects template, but if you want it to be adjustable, you would want either to also publish duration controls for the sequence text, uh, but I think in this case, uh, so the reason for that is that the more text you have, the faster it's going to arrive in. And uh, I would just make that sequence animation last longer. 
on the way in so that um, when you do add more lines of text it doesn't all fly in so quickly but that for this animation doesn't look too bad what do you think all right so that is the main uh, title there so we'll have a quick look at the subtitle actually uh, I have to go back I forgot a really important detail before we look at the subtitle so in the beginning I mentioned that uh, all right, so we have the lead shape. It's aligned and linked to the text, but the next two shapes are not linked to the text for size. They're linked to the lead shape. And I said I'd explain the reason for it, and I forgot about it. So let's go back to that and see why. So if we look here, we see we have these additional uh, supporting controls to adjust the width and to adjust the height. So these are from the size link for the lead. So we've published the X offset for width and the Y offset for height. So then that's why we want to link the next two shapes, the white mask, uh, image mask source and the main shape. We want to link those sizes to this guy. So we want the offsets for this uh, link and this link to be offset from this link so that they are adapting to changes made here. If you left them linked to the text, then you would have to set up some kind of um, system uh, through a rig to make sure that they all relate to each other. So the easiest thing to do is just swap the size link around from the text to the shape that you want to base everything off. So that when we make any changes from the X offset, the offsets from this link and this link are keeping up. And that's very important detail that I forgot before. Okay then, so let's go and look at the subtitle. Alright, so for the subtitle everything is the same as for the main title. Uh, it's just animating in and out with the sequence text. A couple of differences is that the image mask source for the subtitle. It's up here. It is this shape. The shape is aligned to the top edge of the main base shape so that when the text increases and the shape size increases the mask keeps up, keeps its position. And if you noticed before when we do make changes to the text main title size that subtitle is going to keep its um, positions relative to this edge. So when you open up the project file, have a look in this group and you'll see how this was done. So it's just a link here. I've linked the, uh, the subtitles group, this link here, Y position to top edge. So the group itself, which contains the text element, which is animating in on sequence text, the group itself, its Y position, is linked to the top edge of this base shape. And there is, I think, a slight offset, yeah, to keep, to bring it up, keep it sitting there. And if you go to the subtitles, if you change subtitle size, yeah, so they're going to stay there depending on uh, how, you has, how you have set the titles up. And again, we've got the origin there. So when the text gets larger, it's going to jump out too soon. So if the origin is there, there you go. And just thinking again, I mean, I say it time and time again, when you animate your text, always do it through sequence text. And, you know, you can see that being able to provide the user of your template these origin parameters is is really really valuable uh, because if you keyframe the text directly you can't provide these parameters you can't provide uh, publish keyframes through to Final Cut Final Cut will just ignore them but if you do it through a sequence text behavior well then basically you are publishing keyframe settings through okay so that is that uh, so the project file is there for you to download minus all the publishing and uh, if you, so this is another guide for beginners in motion to help you understand uh, some important things. And this is 
pretty much just using all the steps that we covered in previous uh, basic automated titles guides, putting them all together to make something work. So go and check out the link in the description for the graphic that we're reproducing here. All the titles you see in that After Effects titles pack, you can do every one of them in motion easily. And there's lots of basic titles there for you to practice with. And I think for almost all of them, um, the steps you've learned in the automatic titles guides will help you to make them all auto-size, auto-adjustable. There's a few in there that might be tricky to do, so I might pull out some of the more difficult ones and show you how to do those as well. Okay then, thanks for checking it out, thanks for watching, I hope this was useful for you.